Welcome back to Tipped and Bros. Today, we will be discussing the German Fliegerfaust surface-to-air unguided rocket launcher. Design, development, service history, and specifications will be provided. Before we begin, I must disclose that I am no expert and never claim to be. Now, let's get into it. In the closing months of 1944, Nazi Germany was teetering on the brink of collapse, with the Wehrmacht being routed on all fronts. In the face of certain defeat, last-ditch efforts were devised to slow the Allied onslaught. The Fliegerfaust is a product of this desperation. Designed in July of 1944 by engineers of Hugo Schneider AG, a metal goods and munitions company based in Leipzig, Germany. Initial plans envisioned the weapon as a surface-to-air, unguided rocket launcher, capable of defending columns of soldiers from strafing enemy aircraft, a cheap alternative that could be pushed into service quickly with minimal training, jokingly given the moniker of poor man's flak. Literature is conflicting, as the weapon in early documents is referred to as the Luftfaust, or Plain Fist, with the name persisting through both A and B variants. Only later would the device be described as the Fliegerfaust. The Model A, as previously mentioned, was the first iteration of the Luftfaust and was not produced beyond the prototype phase. Construction was basic, consisting of four unrifled 20mm barrels, which were around 3.3 feet in length. The Luftfaust A utilized a modified mine projectile fitted with fins for stabilization and a rocket motor for propulsion. The 20mm rocket-propelled mines would exit the barrel at roughly 615 miles per hour. An appropriate speed, yes, but the range and dispersion rate of the Luftfaust A was unsatisfactory. The Model A was also designed to be a single-use weapon, to be discharged and discarded. Germany, running critically low on raw materials, could not afford to be so frivolous, so the requirements for the Luftfaust were overhauled. The key change was reusability, specifying the need to reload the weapon. Other requirements included an effective firing distance of 1,650 feet, with a dispersion rate of less than 10% within that range. The anticipated projectile velocity was 675 miles per hour. Lastly, the fired projectile was set to self-destruct at about 2,600 feet had a target not been reached. With these specifications, Schneider engineers would assemble the Luftfaust B, redesignated the Fliegerfaust, in February of 1945. The newly crafted Fliegerfaust was a circular, nine-barrel arrangement weighing roughly 19 pounds when fully loaded, with an overall length of five feet. The Luftfaust B was fired in a pair of delayed salvos. The first salvo would discharge four of the nine rockets. After a 0.2 second delay, the remaining five rocket salvo would follow. This minor pause in the firing sequence was necessary to maintain accuracy. If all nine rockets were to be fired at once, the gases from the combustion of each rocket would essentially scramble the flight path, nullifying accuracy. Another interesting development of the Fliegerfaust was its ammunition. Employing the 20 by 138 mm anti-aircraft warhead, stabilization of the rocket-propelled projectile was not achieved with fins, but through rotation. German engineers were able to impart spin on the rocket through a series of four vent holes at its base. The combustion fumes would be forced through these angular openings, generating rotation, which stabilized the projectile. Testing was mediocre as the Fliegerfaust could only maintain a dispersion rate of roughly 20% at distance, but this estimate is considered moderate. Despite this, an order of 10,000 Luftfaust Model Bs alongside 4 million rockets were arranged. Of the 10,000 planned, 65 were intended for the Heer, 30% delegated to the Luftwaffe, and the remaining 5% to the Kriegsmarine. In hindsight, this was wishful thinking as only an approximate 100 Fliegerfausts were ever manufactured, 1% of the requested 10,000. The Luftfaust B can be summed up in four words. Too little, too late. Air superiority was held firmly in the Allies' grasp. A handful of inaccurate surface-to-air rocket launchers would not change this. If they had been deployed in mass, would they discourage low-flying aircraft? Maybe, but the fate of Nazi Germany was sealed, and so with it, the Fliegerfaust. I hope you've enjoyed today's brief overview of the German Fliegerfaust. We are a small channel, so a like is greatly appreciated, and recommendations are always welcome. Again, I am no expert, and never claim to be. Until next time, on Tipton Bros.